Let's look at the subject of computing LME solutions, solutions to linear matrix equalities. So we can have linear matrix inequalities, and we saw that we had um, we had these that appear as uh, stability tests for the matrix A. Given the matrix A, if we have a positive definite matrix P, and if A and P satisfy this linear matrix inequality, that tells us that the system, that the matrix A is a Hurwitz matrix, that is, it has all its eigenvalues in the, strictly in the left half plane. Notice here I have A transpose. I can also have what's called the dual form, that is, I have a positive definite matrix Q, and I have this form of the LMI. And uh, so if this is true, this is true. These are equivalent linear matrix inequalities. And the reason they're equivalent is because the spectrum of A is equal to the spectrum of A transpose. That is, the eigenvalues of A are the eigenvalues of A transpose. So whether we use A or A transpose out front um, in this test does not matter. Similarly, for discrete time systems, we have this linear matrix inequality, and we have this equivalent linear matrix inequality in A transpose. And again, because of the spectrum of A is equal to the spectrum of A transpose, then the spectral radius of A is equal to the spectral radius of A transpose. And so we have we have that to look look for uh, in this procedure. So A and A transpose, spectral radius being again the largest eigenvalue of the largest magnitude of all the eigenvalues. So that's linear matrix inequalities, and they're actually efficient tools for computing linear matrix inequalities. But if you have a linear matrix equality, then it's a lot easier to do the co computation. So in this case, we have this linear matrix equality. And so here we have a Q, and we're looking to solve for, and we have A and Q, and we're looking to solve for P. How do we solve it? There are a number of methods. There's the brute force method, that is, let P be a symbolic matrix. Uh, since this is an LME, we will generally get n times n plus 1 divided by two equations and unknowns. So if A is n by n, then this is how many equations we will get and that many unknowns we will get. That, that's how many unknowns there will be in P. Remember, P needs to be symmetric, so that, that automatically reduces the number of unknowns. We can also use the infinite summation or inter, inter, infinite integral formula for computing solutions. That's no fun. MATLAB has the command dLIAP. Uh, this should be spelled the other way around, L-Y-A-P. dLIAP, which uh, will compute the solution. Or we can do it ourselves using Kronecker products. So what about Kronecker products? What is What exactly is this? Well, when we think of matrix multiplication, there are actually three different kinds of matrix multiplication. There is multiplication by a scalar. And actually, there are probably more uh, definitions, but these are the most common ones. Multiplication by a scalar, that is, you take the matrix, and every element in the matrix you multiply by that scalar. There's the sure product, which is the usual matrix multiplication that we think of, where we have a row times a column, you multiply the elements, into the matching elements, and then you add them together, uh, row times column. And then there's the Kronecker product. So what's the Kronecker product? What's the deal with that? So if we have two matrices, A and B, and uh, it, incidentally, um, with the Shure product, you have to have the number of rows of the second matrix be equal to the number of columns of the first matrix, so that when you multiply, row times columns, you you actually match up the elements. Kronecker products, it doesn't matter uh, what the shape or size of either the, the two matrices are. And so this is how it's defined. You take each element of A, you multiply it by the entire matrix of B, and you do that, and and so these are like sub-matrices, and uh, so basically I take all the elements of A, multiply them by B, and I stack those together. So for example, let's take this matrix A, this matrix B, I take 1 times this matrix, and I get this. 
2 times this matrix and I get this, 3 times this matrix and I get this, 4 times this matrix and I get this. So that's how the Kronecker product works. That's, that's the basic definition of the Kronecker product. And so you, you can see it doesn't, these two matrices, they have no dimensions in common, they're completely different, but I can still form the Kronecker product from them. Now the, the advantage of using Kronecker product is using some of the properties of the Kronecker product. Here are some of the properties. So you have the distributive property. So if I have a sum, I can distribute the Kronecker product through that sum. Um, and that, that works on both sides. If I have a constant time that's multiplying a matrix times the Kronecker product, that's the same as having the constant times the other matrix, or the constant times the Kronecker product itself. Similarly, um, if I have the Kronecker product of three matrices, and I do two first and then the other, that's the same as doing them in a different order. Okay. Again, um, the Kronecker product of A and B is not commutative. In other words, it makes a difference which order you put them in. If you, if you, uh, and and again, it's because A and B aren't necessarily even the same size, and so when you do this Kronecker product, if you do B A, it would it would give you a completely different size matrix. So, the, in general, uh, the Kronecker product does not commute. We can also have mixed products. So if I have a Kronecker product, and then the multiplied by the in the sure form sure matrix multiplication by the Kronecker product C times D, I can get this Kronecker product form. If I take the Kronecker product of A and B and then the inverse of that matrix, I can write it out this way in terms of the inverse matrices. So notice that the inverse stays on the, on the same side as it did before. If I take E to the Kronecker product, that's the same as E to the A Kronecker product E to the B. And for square matrices, the Kronecker product of A and B is the, the determinant of A to the pth power, the determinant of B to the pth power, where we're assuming here that A and B are square matrices, A is of dimension n by n, B is of dimension p by p. So these are some properties. Now, the, the valuable property is uh, associated with the Kronecker product is when it comes in contact with the, the VEC function. What is the VEC function? So uh, two definitions here we're working with. The vectorization function, VEC of x, is basically you take a matrix, you take the columns, and you stack the columns one by one on top of each other so that you end up with a single vector, column vector, out of a, a matrix. So here are some important properties associated with the VEC function. If I take the VEC of ABC, uh, AXB, that is equal to the Kronecker product of A adjoint B, I'm sorry, B adjoint A times the vector X. So this Kronecker product then, I can take these two matrices and I can, I can write it out this way. Similarly, if I have the sum of two matrices, the vectorization of that sum is, I can take the sum of the vectorizations. So, in a sense, it's kind of linear that way. And there are other properties, important properties of the VEC function. These are the ones that are most important for us. So, given a linear, linear matrix inequality with unknown matrix X, we have A1, X, B1, A2, X, B2 is equal to C. We can vectorize this equation this way, A1, X1. So, I'm going to vectorize this. So vectorization of C, so C is just a, a constant, so I, I can just leave it by itself. And I can get by the, the fact that I can separate the vectorization, I can separate this sum into two vectorizations. And now with each of these vectorizations, I can use apply the other uh, property that has the Kronecker product associated with it. And I do that for both of these two vectorizations, and so I get this expression. 
and each of these is multiplied by vec of x and so I can factor that out and I get all of this. So I can take a function where I have x kind of mixed up within the entire product and I can separate it out, separate x out of this function. So if I have the unknown x then I now just have a linear equation and I can solve that linear equation for x and and x in this matrix may or may not be square uh, in which case we may have an infinite number of solutions or we may have a unique solution may, may have no solution and so forth so uh, but again this is just a linear equation in the vec of x once I have solved this linear equation for the vec of x I can um, I can then unvec x so x is a long column I can now take the columns and restore them back to where they were as long as I remember how how long the columns were I can I can unvec this okay so we have two linear matrix equalities the first linear matrix equality is associated with the discrete time Lyapunov uh, continuous time Lyapunov equation so this is the continuous time Lyapunov equation and so this equation then I can write this this way so so notice here I have a transpose P and I have actually have an identity matrix over here I have an identity matrix here and so this becomes this quantity notice that this term comes over to this side but it remains the same and then here I have the trend I have the identity and actually this would be identity transposed in this case this guy comes over to this side and gets transposed times the identity okay so this is what I have this matrix multiplied by the vectorization P is equal to minus the vectorization of Q and so I can solve this equation for for P so again this is just a linear equation in the unknown vectorization P again once I solve for P I can just unstack the columns and, and put them back together and form the P matrix. So that's how to solve this linear matrix equality. To solve this linear matrix equality, notice here I have A transpose A. This A comes over to the other side and gets transposed. This A transpose comes to this side and I have two identities here. And so vectorizing this side of the equation gives this expression vectorizing this side of the equation gives this expression and again I can now solve for the vectorization of P um, and just again solving this linear equation and then once I've solved for P vectorization of P I can unvec it and and get P so this is how we can compute linear matrix inequalities or equalities for both the continuous and discrete time Lyapunov equations here's another equation that we will come across and we will see this when we come to looking at reduced order observers in this linear matrix equality we have the unknowns um, T and L <coughs> and this is our linear matrix equality notice that it's a linear matrix equality because it's linear because we don't have T times L or T times T we, we have T times constant matrices and L times a constant matrix and so um, when we vectorize now this equation I can write this side this way and I can write this so side this way so again vectorizing each side now both vec T and vec L are unknowns in this equation and so I can take this term over to the other side and I can write this in this form so I have this times vec T minus this times vec L and all of that is equal to zero so what is this saying this is saying I form this matrix and I compute the null space a null space basis for this matrix and the, those the columns of that null space matrix will give me solutions to this linear matrix equality Okay. Now in this case, it's possible, and it's very common in fact, for 
we, for us to get multiple columns coming out instead of a single column like we, we had in the, in the previous equation. In this equation, we have a single column that's unknown and <clears throat> solving for that, for that unknown then, um, I would get just a single column. In general, this will, this will be a square matrix. Okay, this will be a square matrix. And so solving uh, an equation like this, when you have a square matrix, if you get a solution, then there will be only one solution. It will be a unique solution. Okay, so in this case, we may get multiple columns, in which case we do not have a unique solution. And so we can combine solution or so combine columns. We just basically need to find um, one vector in the null space of this matrix. And so we may combine columns of the null space to to get and any combina linear combination of uh, vectors in the null space of uh, of this matrix will work. And so any any uh, column then that's a linear combination of the other columns um, can work. And so so we we can now c compute solutions of a linear matrix equality like this.